In this video, we look at nonlinear regression, which is part of the AI HL only course in topic four, statistics and probability under the large subtopic of bivariate statistics. Now, so far in your journey of mathematics for bivariate statistics, you would have gone through plotting data on a scatter plot, doing a line of best fit by eye, finding the line of regression equation, the linear line of regression equation using your calculator, finding the correlation value, R, and then describing the fit of, of, of R. And then as we advance into HL-only concepts, you would have encountered the coefficient of determination, R squared. Now we're looking at finding models that fit the data that aren't linear. So, so far it's all been linear, just straight lines, but now we encounter all different types of models. And this kind of ties in with topic two functions with your, with your knowledge of the different types of functions here. And in the AI HL course for nonlinear regression, you'll encounter these six different types of models. And it's important to remember and, 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 and definitely understand the standard form of these models, so I have them written here, and also the shape of the curves. That way when you see a scatter plot of a given set of data, you can say, oh, okay, that kind of fits an exponential curve or a sinusoidal curve or a quadratic curve. Okay, I'm now gonna talk through my thought process when, when I encounter one of these types of problems. And I've, I've pulled out a question from the RV Question Bank here. It's about uh, Christina opening a painting exhibition in Berlin. And we have the independent variable, which is the days after opening. So for example, this first data point here is the second day after opening. And the dependent variable is the associated number of guests that day. And we can see here that unfortunately it decreases over time. So clearly there would have been some um, some exuberance at the start and, and, and the novelty factor and, and people would have come in to see this new gallery. And then unfortunately it, it, it decreased, but then it looks to be plateauing here. Now in this question, I don't have the question parts here because there were, there were a few question parts, but what I want to go through is how do we find an appropriate model, so out of these options here, that nicely fits this data and that way we can forecast other data points. So for example, what if I wanted to estimate maybe the 18th day? I don't have that data point here, but using an appropriate model with a high R squared value, which I'll talk about more in a second, I can then forecast other data points. But also being conscious not to, uh, but just being conscious of the limitations of extrapolation as well though. Okay, let's pull up the calculator. Let's enter this data in. So we go into the statistics section. We label our columns, so the first column is D for days, so D, and the second column is G for guests. And let's go ahead and enter it. I'll just enter the first one, then I'll pause the video. So the first data point is 2 and 142, and then we just go down the columns. So I'm just going to pause the video and finish this. There we have our data entered there. The next step that I go through is to visualize the scatter plot of this data. The way to do that, we can go Control New Page or Control Doc. Number five, add data and statistics. Let's assign the horizontal axis our independent variable D and our vertical axis our independent variable G. And there we can see the curve. Now, the calculator naturally fits it quite nicely on the screen. So sometimes it won't be obvious the curve, but you'll, you'll sort of, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get good at trying to looking at it and going, okay, this kind of fits a, maybe it's a linear curve, or maybe it's half of a quadratic curve. Maybe it's a portion of an exponential curve, um, of a cubic curve, or in my view, this one here is starting to look like an exponential curve. So I'm actually gonna overlay an exponential regression to see if it nicely fits the data, just by eye. We'll then go ahead and calculate the R squared value to determine how strong that is. But first step for me is just to visualize whether it fits it by eye. So we can go menu, number four, analyze, number six, regression, and I'm going to try an exponential. There we go, that looks pretty good. And there's the equation of that exponential model. They do keep quite a few decimal places, but it's 166 times 0.93 to the power of X. Now, the way that we compare which models we should use is by comparing the R squared value, the coefficient of determination. Now, if you're not sure what that is, I recommend watching the key concept video on that topic, the coefficient of determination. But the way that we find that R squared value is to go back to the statistics page. Let's go up to the top of the next column, column C, and we can go menu, number four, statistics, number one, stat calculations. And I'm gonna choose the A, exponential regression, the X1 list is our independent variable D. The Y1 list is our dependent variable G. Hit OK. And we get our R squared value there. 
Now you can go ahead, if you're not sure which model to choose, you can go ahead and do this on the next few columns for various different other types of models. So for example, you could do a linear one. Actually, let's go ahead and do that and we can, we can compare the R squared values. So let's go menu, number four, statistics, number one, stat calculations, and let's choose number three, linear regression. Again, the X1, sorry, the X list and the Y list, hit OK. And we get an R squared value of 0.91 as opposed to our exponential 0.97. Now, the closer that R squared value is to one, the stronger the fit. So we're looking for a high R squared value, an R squared value closest to one. Sometimes questions will give you a hint and it'll say find an exponential model or find a logarithmic model, or sometimes they may just ask find an appropriate model. And you can either look at it and, and make a decision or maybe test a few different ones or test uh, in here, test a few different types of models and then compare their R squared values. Now, some more advanced nonlinear regression IB exam questions will ask you to what's called linearize the data. Now, what that means is in this question here, our data isn't quite linear. It kind of looks like it, but it sort of slopes away and then starts to flatten out. So we don't have a linear set of data. Now, we might be asked to use our knowledge of logarithms to actually make this data linear and then, and then form a linear regression line, but it has a log inside it. Now, I'll show you how to linearize a set of data just using your calculator. It's very, it's, it's quite useful. So just recall here, we have our two original data sets here, our column D and our column G for the days after opening a number of guests. I'm just gonna tab across here to a available column. I'll just use J. And I'm actually going to linearize this data by taking the log of the number of guests. Now I know that in advance because this is an exponential model, but you could play around by taking the log of both sets of data and then looking at the scatter plots. In this example here, I'm just going to take the log of G and then view the scatter plot of the log of G versus D. So I want to take the log of all these G values. I'm gonna label this column LG, which stands for the log of G. In the next cell, which is the equals cell, we go equals, and then control log, base 10. We can either use base 10 or some questions might ask you to do the natural log. And then from there, we go inside the bracket here and we click variable. And it's asking me, well, out of all the columns or all the data that we have stored in the calculator, which data do we want to take the log of? And that will be where we want to take a log of the G column, hit G, hit enter. And there we have it. We have we now have the log of all of these number of guests. So our new data set is actually two days after opening and the log of G, which is 2.15. Now you may be wondering, well, what's the point of that? And and let's see this, let's see this now. Let's now do a scatter plot of the log of G versus D. So we go control, new document, add data and statistics. Our independent variable is still D, the number of days. But now our, our vertical axis variable is the log of G, LG. And notice here, we have linearized the data. The data is now more linear, but our vertical axis is the log of G, not G. We can then overlay a linear line of regression equation here. So we get menu, analyze, regression, and this is show linear. Now the calculator gives us a linear regression equation, but it's actually the log of G is equal to negative 0.03 D plus 2.22. So I recommend practicing some of those linearization questions, but what I wanted to demonstrate here is if you're confident with your calculator, you can do it all in the spreadsheet section. You don't need to by hand take the logs and then enter all of those log values into your calculator. You can just do it all in one hit and then create the scatter plot from there. Okay, that was an introduction to nonlinear regression. I recommend getting very confident using your calculator for here, understanding the R squared value and understanding these types of models which may be assessed in an AI HL exam. Okay, good luck.